Welcome back. Today I'm going to explain you an action, thriller movie, called Fast and Furious Hobbs and Shaw. Sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Hobbs and Shaw starts by introducing us to a woman named Hattie Shaw who alongside her MI6 colleagues, is on a mission to recover a high-tech, controllable super virus called Snowflake from a dangerous group known as Edian. Despite their efforts, an Edian operative named Brixton Moore, who is enhanced with cybernetic implants giving him superhuman abilities, is able to stop them. He kills all of the MI6 agents except for Hattie. Facing a dire situation, Hattie decides to inject the last remaining snowflake sample into herself for safekeeping before escaping. However, Brixton frames Hattie, making it seem like she betrayed her team and stole the snowflake virus. The task of resolving the crisis and retrieving the snowflake virus fell to the best agents available. This included Luke Hobbs, a DSS agent hired by the CIA to apprehend Hattie, who is perceived as a rogue MI6 agent and a supposed thief of Snowflake. Another recruit is Deckard Shaw, a UKSF assassin and Hattie's elder brother. After accepting their mission, Hobbs and Deckard met at a covert CIA base in the Leadenhall building. However, upon realizing that they would have to work together to track down the lethal virus, these two stubborn, bald men flatly refused to cooperate. Following their meeting, Deckard heads to Hattie's apartment to gather intel by hacking her computer, while Hobbs chooses to pursue Hattie's trail at the CIA black site. Despite their refusal to cooperate, both Hobbs and Deckard commit to their mission professionally, employing his superior tracking skills, Hobbs successfully locates Hattie. After a brief fight, he brings her back to the CIA office. At the same time, Deckard unexpectedly encounters Edian agents but manages to overpower them all. The next day, Hobbs finds himself in a tense discussion with Hattie, which is interrupted by a phone call from his daughter, Samantha. She is intrigued by her father's mission to capture the striking secret agent. As Hobbs is on the call with his daughter, Hattie seizes the opportunity. She slips out of her handcuffs and subdues one of the CIA agents assigned to monitor her. Hobbs and Hattie engage in another intense fight until Deckard arrives at the CIA office, demanding that Hobbs release Hattie. Hobbs, seeing Deckard's agitation, assumes that Hattie is Deckard's girlfriend. However, Deckard clarifies that Hattie is actually his younger sister. Over at Edian's headquarters, the director commands an urgent upgrade to Brixton's body with fresh programs and implants. Back at the CIA office, Hattie confesses to Hobbs and Deckard that she has the snowflake virus inside her, as she had injected it into herself while evading Brixton. Shortly after Hattie's revelation, Brixton and his crew assault the CIA office, managing to abduct Hattie. It's at this point it becomes known that Deckard is acquainted with Brixton, who is actually a former colleague turned adversary. Deckard had supposedly shot and killed him in the past. Hobbs engages in a fierce battle with Brixton to rescue Hattie. Just in time, Deckard arrives in his McLaren 720s, whisking them away from the scene. This prompts an adrenaline-filled chase through the streets of London. Despite being outnumbered, Hobbs and Deckard manage to fend off all of Brixton's men and escape when Brixton crashes into a double-decker bus. Still, through Edian's manipulation of the global news media, Brixton frames the trio as traitors. Deckard discloses that Edian frequently uses their control over global news to further their agenda of world domination. Recognizing their common goal, Hobbs and Deckard finally agree to work together to extract the snowflake virus from Hattie before it harms her. Hobbs suggests they seek out Professor Andrico, the scientist who created the snowflake virus. He has managed to track down Andrico's location. Once the trio locates Professor Andrico, he explains to them that his intention in creating Snowflake was to effectively distribute vaccines, but Edian stole it for their malicious purposes. To thwart Edian's plans of using the super virus to obliterate humanity, Professor Andrico proposes two solutions, either kill Hattie and incinerate her body with the virus still inside, or use a specific extraction device located in Edian's special facility in Chernobyl, Ukraine, to remove the virus. Despite the apparent impossibility and high likelihood of failure, Deckard opts for the latter solution to keep his sister alive. Hobbs then reaches out to his daughter, requesting his partner to ensure Samantha's safety. Subsequently, Deckard uses his access as an MI6 agent to alter their identities, preparing fake passports to travel to Russia without attracting the authorities' attention. Deckard and Hattie manage to cross the checkpoint, but Hobbs encounters a hiccup when his passport is declined and he's flagged as suspicious. It turns out that Deckard had purposely set Hobbs up to be detained so that he wouldn't accompany them on the mission to extract the deadly virus from Hattie. Hobbs manages to persuade the airport officials and boards the same plane as Deckard and Hattie. During the flight, Hobbs and Deckard encounter a man named Dinkley, who reveals himself to be an air marshal. Dinkley offers his assistance and hands them his business cards. Upon landing in Moscow, the trio heads straight to Margarita's residence. Meanwhile, 
Brixton kidnaps Professor Andriko and forces him to reprogram the deadly virus at Edian's facility in Ukraine. Edian's director orders Brixton to persuade Deckard and Hobbes to join Edian in their mission to rule the world. Having regrouped with Deckard's old flame Margarita to restock their weapons in Moscow, the three devise a plan to infiltrate Edian's facility in Ukraine. Hattie proposes using a diversion strategy passed down in her family for generations. In addition to providing advanced weapons and equipment, Margarita supplies Hobbes and Deckard with stealth fighter jets to fly undetected to Ukraine. Meanwhile, she plans to lure Brixton to her residence under the pretense of handing over Hattie. Successfully infiltrating Edian's facility in Ukraine, Hobbes and Deckard neutralize several of Brixton's men. However, their constant bickering and showboating give away their position. Just as they're about to rescue Hattie, Brixton and his Edian agents, aware of their intrusion, surround and incapacitate them. Brixton attempts to persuade Hobbes and Deckard to join Edian, promising them superhuman powers like his own to rule the world, but both flatly refuse. Meanwhile, Hattie, in the process of virus extraction, frees herself with Professor Andrico's assistance and retrieves the extraction device. Discovering her brother and Hobbes held hostage, Hattie attempts a rescue. However, she struggles to use Edian's weapon, which requires an agent's fingerprint for activation. Professor Andrico steps in with a new weapon that lacks the fingerprint scanner feature. Hobbes and Deckard manage to escape, engaging in a brutal fight with Brixton and his henchmen. The trio then detonates the facility and flees the premises. Unfortunately, Brixton kills Professor Andrico before he can escape. Despite managing to incapacitate Brixton in a high-stakes chase, the extraction device suffers significant damage. This leads Deckard to grow skeptical about the success of their mission. However, Hobbes, striving to keep the peace between Deckard and Hattie, suggests they might still be able to remove the virus and save Hattie. In search of aid to repair the device and a safe place to hide, Hobbes guides Deckard and Hattie to his childhood home in Samoa to visit his estranged brother, Jonah, a skilled mechanic. Though the reunion is fraught with tension due to Hobbes being responsible for their father's imprisonment, their mother eventually persuades Jonah to help. Demonstrating impressive mechanical skills comparable to Tej Parker, Jonah owns the largest auto repair shop in Samoa with a global clientele. As Jonah works on the device, a makeshift battalion prepares for Edian's impending arrival by deactivating their weapons with an authorization code shutdown and setting traps throughout the island. Just as Jonah completes the device repair and initiates the virus extraction, Brixton and his troops descend on them. Without firearms due to their mother's fear and ban, they rely on traditional Samoan weapons to battle Brixton's technologically equipped troops. However, the Samoans' fierce spirit and formidable physical strength pose a significant challenge for Brixton's men. In the ensuing battle, Brixton's soldiers fall while the Samoans suffer minimal casualties. Realizing his troops' defeat, Brixton kidnaps Hattie and tries to escape in a helicopter. However, Hobbes, Deckard, and the Samoans pursue in customized trucks provided by Jonah. Joining forces, Hobbes and Deckard ultimately defeat Brixton, who is subsequently remotely terminated by the unseen Edian director. This director sends a message implying familiarity with Hobbes and attempts to recruit him in the Shaws to Edian. Nevertheless, they reject the offer and vow to hunt down the director. After driving off the remaining Edian agents, Jonah and the Samoans celebrate their victory. In mid- and post-credits scenes, Hobbes introduces his daughter to their extended family in Samoa. Simultaneously, Deckard and Hattie hint at a plan to break their mother out of prison. In the aftermath, Hobbes receives a call from his partner, Locke, who informs him that he has infiltrated a facility and found a virus more potent than the snowflake. Meanwhile, as a cheeky response to Deckard's earlier Mike Oxmall prank, Hobbes arranges for the London police to pursue Deckard under the false name Hugh Janus. Make sure to subscribe our channel for more videos like this. Thank you and have a nice day.